Terry, and welcome to Forsaken Westerns. Up next, we've got an episode of a television show that never launched. The title of the show is Luke and the Tenderfoot. The title of this episode is The Boston Kid, and it stars Edgar Buchanan and Carlton Carpenter. And our guest stars are amazing. There's Michael Landon, Leonard Nimoy, Jim Bannon, Dabs Greer, and Lee Van Cleef. Get ready, enjoy this. It's from 1955, and we'll see you after the show. One dozen pat pending sure fire husband getter sassfras sachet. I owe you one hand. It's your lucky day, one you won't soon forget. I travel far and wide all over the West, selling and trading. <laughs> You're lucky you caught me when you did. I was just on my way somewhere else. Herkimer's my name. Trading's my game. Got something for everybody. Something for everybody. <laughs> argument with you, Fuzzy. With me? You cheated us. Sold us this for bear grease. All it is is melted down bacon dripping. What makes you so sure? What makes you such a big crook? That's what we'd like to know. Now, you're going to give us our money back, or we're going to take this wagon apart. What do you mean? Stop molesting that old man. <laughs> bacon grease, do you say? That's what it is, old man. A dollar for bacon grease. Oh, I'll exchange it for you. Here, I'll exchange it for you. I got more bear grease than I can sell. Drug on the market. Been killing bears like anything this year. Hey, bacon drippings. That's something else again. We're two or three times what's bear grease. Hold on, old man. Three times as much, huh? What, are you trying to cheat us? You wouldn't want to cheat me. You pay for bear grease, that's what I'm giving you. We're keeping what we got. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> well, hey, did he slip? He wasn't about to come to that old man's rescue, or would he? Well, I don't think it's very nice. Hey, tell us something, will you do? Who sold that rich man's suit on you? Oh, that's, oh, yeah, very pretty. Oh, that's very nice. Look at it's that. It's a fine nice fit. fit. Yeah, pretty. <laughs> rich? Hey, you. What they say about your suit? Pay them no attention. Well, been mothballs a long time. If I'm not mistaken, that's pure, unadulterated Philadelphia broadcloth. Well, I wouldn't know belong to my father. A little snug here or there. He uh, got killed during the war. You know, if I was to make a shrewd guess, I'd say you was from the east. Boston. You ever been out west before this? No, this is my first time. Oh, that's bad. Probably don't know a hog's head from a sheep's tail. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
and I'll be all right. Yeah, you're going to need lots of things. Well, I need to get out Mr. Struger's place. Now, let's see. You're going to need three, uh, no four strings, a little wonder beads. What for? Have you ever been surrounded by Indians? No. Territory's full of them. Suppose the Indians would so attack you. Don't stand there and tell me you wouldn't want something to pacify them with. I suppose I would. What's the name of that fellow you want to go see? Struger. He and my father used to be friends back in Boston. Oh, Struger. Sure, know it well. You have me pick up these things, I'll ride you out there. Sure enough. You boys gonna let that city kid get away with this? Let him try it. He already has. Why didn't you go after him? Pick your own time. Have some fun with him. Rough. We'll do that, Mr. Dark. You know Mr. Stoker? Intimately. Which way did you say he lived? About a mile south of here. James Pete. Pete Quinn, I was living with my mother back in Boston. She, uh, go on there, boy. She passed on about a month ago. I said Mr. Struger was sure to have some work for me. He's a pigeon-legged jackrabbit shooter. Pigeon-legged jackrabbit? Yeah, it jumps behind and look like they're flying. Use the ears like flaps for sudden stops. Whole territory's full of them. <laughs> He's here to horn toad cave. Ain't a man in the West doesn't keep at least one horn toad in a pet. We ought to be there for now. Ooh. Maybe we ought to tally up. Now, let's see, there's the... Uh, Little wonder beads, pigeon-legged jackrabbit shooter. Well, you know, Mr. Herkimer, someday I'm going to buy all this stuff from you. Someday? Well, I spent my last cent on the coach fare. I've been tricked. But I'll get some money sometime. Maybe, uh, maybe next time you're through. I didn't go buy my dinner tonight. You mean you haven't any money either? Man of my stature, I'm independently wealthy. See this your book? Them's trades I've made. Barter. Abel Jones, Abilene Cans. That's candidate's abbreviation. I owe you one cow. That was for a set of A1 imitation genuine sterling silverware. Oh. <laughs> Mr. R. Coolidge, Painted Rock, Three Chickens. Yeah, that was for a lady's hat. Yeah, goose for a pot, pig for a lady's dress. The book's full of names of people and places and the things they owe. Well, I couldn't carry all them foul and livestock around with me. They're all there when I want them. Pages of them. Man's assets count. Sure this is the place? Ain't no other houses around. Looks like it was burned deliberate. died over a year ago. Typhoid, they burned his place down so the germs wouldn't contaminate anybody else. You uh, didn't leave any relatives, anything like that? Oh, not a soul in the world. You hear that? I'm gonna be kind of busy, Sonny. Nobody cheats Johnny Dart. Uh, I dropped my cards by accident. You want to argue about it? Not that way, Mr. Dart. Then I suggest you get out of town. Yes, sir. That kind of thing happened very often? Yeah, hey, once a day and twice on Saturday. That's Johnny Dart. He's a gambler and a gunslinger. He's killed more men than he can count. I've got my bag.
school, Marm. You're looking so hard. That happens to be my sister, dude. You hush your mouth, Clyde. That's Jim Dandy himself, all dressed up in a city dress. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You come with me. <laughs> you tell me what right here. Take him. Take off those pants. Oh, but I... I couldn't. I'll go in the back room and sew them up for you. That's better. Now, you wait right here. I won't be a minute. Bring him out of here. of mercy have forced my hand. What have you to hit that boy and broke his jaw in four places? Or hit that one there and reared his head back hard enough to break his neck? Me? His own exhibition, giving a few boxing matches. One of the most ferocious young fighters of our generation. Boston Kid. I've heard of the Boston Kid. You really as tough as he says? Inside. Thank you very much. It was good of you to restrain yourself from hitting them. I didn't really have a chance. You're just being modest. Hadn't you better put on your pants? Oh. <laughs> yes, sir. You do a little bark fighting on the moon, my day. <laughs> 250 rounds, no rest. You'll dream in that way. So rest in peace. <laughs> Sam? There's a fighter in town. Arrange a fight. I can't do that. I ain't ashamed of once was. Well, not you, the Boston kid. Go on and tell everybody. The greatest fight of the century. Three o'clock this afternoon in old Mortimer's barn. Now, now, now wait just one full minute here. We... The Boston Kid versus Meekum, Sherrill, and Bangles in that order. You, you can't do that. Why, it'd be a massacre. It'd be a blight on my conscience. How could I ever face the mothers of them poor, broken, bleeding boys? <laughs> what am I worried about? They won't take on the kid. They got too much sense. They will if I ask them. Yeah, well, explain. It's just a simple exhibition bout. But the kid don't do things simple. What's this about? I'm betting on the kid. Betting? Did you say betting? It's against his code of ethics. Anything with a taint of gambling. Besides, he, he never fights without a purse. You talk too much. Well, I gotta meditate about this. A day or two at least. Maybe a week. People been saying right along that all you are is a fake and a fraud and a liar. You trying to say I'm not the Boston kid? I'm saying he's trying to weasel you out of a simple, bare-fisted exhibition bout. We ain't trying to weasel out of nothing. Then it's on? Bet it is. All right. Now, look, here's a word of warning. 
Those boys ain't pushovers, and they don't always fight by the rules. The only people they can't beat in a fight, and this whole country is each other, so. You better get to them fast. You mean you take them on and just keep people from thinking bad of me? You stuck your neck out for me before, didn't you? Come on, boy. We better get in the wagon and skedaddle out of here. Oh, Mr. Herkimer, running away, that wouldn't be honest. I mean, even though we both of us told a white lie for good purpose, one thing that both of us are is honest. agreed to fight him. I told him the kid wouldn't mark him up too much. Don't you worry, man. I'll take care of you. Anything you want, boys, anything you want. Here's your receipt. Won't you have a drink? Never touch your stuff. On me. Double shot street. What you got here? Anything you want, boys, anything you want. Two. All right, boys, the odds have gone up. Three to one. Who's with it? A little bit of betting, then. Yeah. Then better make, make the best of a bad situation. This was given to me. Wild Bill Hickok himself. The last town I was in, the Society for the Preservation of the Old West offered me $400 for it. I'll lend you 15 on it. Always making a little joke. Twenty. How long have you been stealing for a living? Well, who are you liking to fight? Boston kid, but I can't get anybody to bet against him. What odds you give it? Well, you mean you'd take those three local boys? Oh. Got a little extra money here. Just a friendly bet. Don't tend to win. Oh, hello there. I thought you were a gentleman, but I was mistaken. You didn't hit my brother and those other two boys this morning. Oh, no. You were waiting for this. For money. It was all a scheme. And... And I'm sorry I patched your pants. Oh, Miss Meekham, I... Is a killer instinct in you aroused? Are you going to prove that you can batter my brother's face beyond recognition? No, no, I'm, I'm not going to prove don't anything. Be, don't be here, no mind. Pretty fancy, eh? Fights for you. It's uh, what I owe you. Only friend I got left in the world. What do you have to go and say that for? I just heard. You bet against the kid. Well, I was just. Who went and told you a dirty lie like that? Is that what you two do? Go from town to town pulling this stunt? You made me put my money on a fixed job. If that kid loses, I'm swindled out of hundreds of dollars. Nobody does that to me. Young, old, ugly, or pretty. I just forgot something in my wagon. You're not leaving the barn. If that kid loses, they're going to have to find a hole to bury you. Okay, Sam. <laughs> Gentlemen, I would like to present a man who is noted for his boxing style. His grace, his agility, that great, famous, world-renowned Boston Kid. 
He is about to give a demonstration against three of the best amateur fighters of our community. Meekum, Cheryl, and Bango. Now the first victim to meet, the first fighter to meet the kid is our own Clyde Meekum. Come on. Come on. What am I cheering for? He wins, I lose the money. He loses. against them. You've got your money. Now you're going to get something else. Give him your gun. I don't want no gun. Strap it on him. You either hang a cheat or you shoot him. You want to shoot somebody, you shoot me. You're begging to die, aren't you? If anybody lost any money betting on me, they're going to get it back. Every cent of it. I'll work right here in this town until I made enough. What makes you think you're going to live that long? 
You don't, you don't know nothing about guns. No, not about people either. You bet against me because you were the only one who knew I wasn't any good. Hope you won a lot. Go ahead, Mr. Dart. You want to kill me? Won't be nothing lost. Except people won't get their money back. You'll be doing me a favor. I got no kin, no place to live, nothing. Go ahead, you want to shoot somebody? Go on. Anybody else in this town's had a whack at me? You can take the final one. He sold you down the river, yet you're still standing up for him. You must be the biggest clown in the world. Come on, boys, I'm paying off in the saloon. Wish for you too, boy. I never knew nobody needed money that bad. I'm worried about. It's you. I'll be all right. I'm sorry about those things I said. I'm not really a prize fighter. I know that now. But you were very brave. We'd like you to come to supper. What are you doing? Hiding out or something? No, I just, uh, I was resting. Yeah. Oh, come here. This is yours. Where'd you get it? Well, after Herkimer paid me back the $15, he owed me had 30 left, and this is all he was able to buy with it. It's not much. But it is a horse and a saddle. You mean he only made $30 total? That's right. Now, what do I want with a horse? I've never been on a horse in my life. Oh, there's something else he said to give to you. He said something about he'd signed it off to you. That, and he muttered something that you could collect on it to pay off all the people who lost on the fight today. What is it? It's that old man's most precious possession. His old age security. Chickens, ducks, geese. Oh, sorry, I made some supper, ma'am. Let's go. Uh, don't forget your bag. Oh, thank you. Goodbye. What do you want? There's that Arabian steed you bought. Here's your old age security.
Wasn't that very entertaining? And big stars in, in early roles. Thank you for joining us with the Forsaken Westerns. We hope you'll join us again here next time. We have hundreds of episodes of these almost lost, almost forgotten television shows to bring you here. My name's Bob Terry. Have a great day.